of Governor Healy and Secretary Augustus here. But first, Governor, as you may know, when the Lieutenant Governor was here, I gave her a t-shirt. Well, <laughs> you're in a different league, my friend. So you are getting Attleboro sweatpants. Oh, and it's a, it's a different season, too. That's right. So yeah. hopefully the LG doesn't get upset, but yeah. those are for she'll, you, my friend. She'll be jealous. Wear them in good yeah. health. Yeah. And welcome to Attleboro. Thank you so much. Great to be here. Good afternoon, everybody. I, as I said, I am proud and honored to welcome Governor Healy and Secretary Augustus and all of you here today. And I am very much proud to give my strong support, Governor, to your $4 billion Affordable Homes Act. As Attleboro evolves from being a former jewelry capital of the world into a diverse and thriving education-centered community, we need housing of all kinds to ensure our continued growth and success. One example is the building behind us, now known as Union Mills. This century-old building was part of a former jewelry mill complex and it is a beautiful example of an adaptive reuse mixed income housing project located only two blocks from the MBTA station and we may be interrupted by a train that could go by at any minute. This project was spearheaded by Bob Jones whose son is with us. Bob is a longtime business owner. The project included several funding sources, CDGB funds, Mass Housing, Workforce Housing funds, DHCD funds and others. It has 59 units that includes eight low income and 17 workforce apartments from studio, one and two bedroom apartments. Yet even with this lovely development behind us and the other recent housing developments, which we will show the governor shortly, we cannot keep up with the need for more housing of all kinds across affordability spectrums, size and diversity spectrums. In fact, one of the main reasons I ran for mayor is because I'm concerned that my kids <coughs> and many young people in the city may not be able to buy a home in the city where they were born. I'm concerned because I get phone calls from senior citizens living in cars because they can't find a place to live. I get phone calls from families who are forced out of the apartment or homes they are renting because overnight the landlord has just about doubled their rent. I'm concerned about our veterans and low-income residents You want, to talk MB you, want, yeah. you want to talk MBTA? Um, I'm concerned with veterans and low-income residents living in apartments with skyrocketing rents. I'm concerned about working professionals and young families looking to buy homes but finding themselves quickly priced out or losing very quickly in a bidding war. We all know that tackling the housing crisis requires bold thinking, creativity, vision, and a multifaceted attack. But we also know that it cannot be done without a lot of money and boy, Governor, have you delivered. Four billion dollars will go a long way. It's the diverse and dynamic proposals in the housing bond that are innovative, meaningful, and sustainable. They will go a long way to moving the housing needle both here in Attleboro and across the state. They also have significant drivers for employment and are worthy investments in the future of our city and our commonwealth. Friends, there is much to be done for sure, and we must do it together. Thank you, Governor, for putting some serious skin in the housing game. But it's up to all of us to bring it home. Thank you very much. Thank you for coming. And, Governor, thank you for being here. Thank you so much, Mayor. Thank you so much, Mayor. It's, uh, it's great to have you as a partner. And I think, thank you for everything that you're doing for, for folks here in Attleboro and, you know, the partnership. I think about what's possible for our state. And I appreciate you have long been an advocate for dealing with the housing crisis that it is in this state and dealing with the fact that we just don't have enough affordable housing anywhere. I mean, here and across the state. And so I want to thank you for your leadership on that front. I want to thank you for the sweats. I had a chance to go to the high school, awesome, beautiful high school, um, and, and actually shot a basket on the floor. Um, so I'll, I'll wear those uh, and, and think fondly of, uh, of all things Attleboro. To my colleagues in government, always great to see you um, and appreciate all the support that you gave and the work that you did. Together we were able to pass a budget that made historic investments in so many things, including housing, and also recently tax credits uh, and tax cuts for the first time in over 25 years. And I just really appreciate the work and thank you both for that. Representative Jim Hawkins, Representative Adam Scanlon, and lovely to be joined today by Representative Carol Do uh, Doherty as well. So thank you for that. Um, also, uh, I'm going to introduce you to uh, Secretary Ed Augustus. Um, 
and he's going to also say a few words, but more on him in, in just a moment. Um, it is wonderful to uh, see Charlie and all the folks from POA. I appreciate the advocacy and the work done by our advocates and the nonprofit community and nonprofit developers. It's great. Uh, to Tara and Eliza, developers, awesome to meet you. I look forward to chatting. It's great to see women leading in this critical industry. And it's wonderful to be here at Union Mills. We're looking at affordable homes in low and middle income uh, families, and you know we're going to be we're going to be doing it here today in a historic city with a really really strong community. Shortly, we'll be visiting the Jewel and then Gardner Terrace as well as 61 Pine Street. We're proud that state programs play a role in helping to make these kinds of developments possible. And we are grateful for all the ways in which Attleboro is engaging with state programs and finding ways to create affordable homes. We're here today to talk about investing in and expanding these same programs and some new programs. We want to create more affordable homes and livable communities around the state. Um, Look, you know, I have said from the outset that this team, our administration, we're focused on three things. Affordability, competitiveness, and equity, okay? And that's what the housing bond bill does. It advances all three of those things, and all three of those things are super, super important. An affordability agenda, and I'm going to yell a little, but it's okay, because I want you to hear this. An affordability agenda. This is about lowering costs. People can't afford it. You can't afford groceries. You can't afford the electric bill. You can't afford gas. You can't afford clothes. You know, it's harder and harder. I know that. We know that. And part of what we're trying to do as an administration is do everything we can do to make life more affordable. And there's no area where we need it more critically than in housing. That's why we've got to get this done, and we've got to get it done quickly. I mentioned our budget. Really proud and of the teamwork here. For the first time, we have permanent free school meals, breakfast and lunch for every kid in the state. Free community college for anyone 25 years or older who had some credits towards a degree but weren't able to complete it. And importantly, as we just recently announced, tax cuts for seniors, for renters, for families, and for our businesses. Now, we put a special focus as well on making a housing more affordable. We know it is the greatest challenge that we face. So let me tell you what we did. As governor, I was clear. We needed a new secretary. We needed somebody who was going to be solely and exclusively focused on generating housing across this state. And that is who we have in Secretary Ed Augustus, the Commonwealth's first ever Secretary of Housing and Livable Communities. And I want to thank Ed for all the work that he and his team did in the recent bond bill and so much more. The second thing we did was to file that state budget, which included, among some of the other things, a thousand new rental vouchers, uh, launching the state's first climate bank that is dedicated to building and preserving affordable housing. We expanded tax incentives that spur the creation of affordable homes for low and middle income families. Uh, tax cuts in that recent package, getting money to families and seniors to help with housing costs. Let me tell you what I mean specifically. The Housing Development Incentive Program, we call it HTIP, it's a tax break that unlocks new home building in gateway cities like Attleboro. Super important. And we just increased the statewide cap from $10 million to $57 million, because that's how important it is. It's going to bring investment to places like Attleboro and Brockton and Fall River and New Bedford, Taunton and beyond. And it's going to lower housing costs across the region. It really, really will. In addition, our tax cut package also expands the statewide low-income housing tax credit from $40 million to $60 million. It's a big expansion and it's really important because that's the tax break that allows development to go forward and will unlock affordable homes like those here at Union Mills. Together, all of these tax cuts and incentives represent the needed big step forward. I also know that we need to do more, and that is why, as Mayor DeSimone announced, we announced last week a $4 billion housing bond bill. That's a big number, and there's a reason for it because it's that big of an issue for our state. We're a great state. 
We're a great state. I know some of you pop over to Rhode Island. It's nice to visit. You can shop there. You can have a meal. You can go gamble, whatever. But I want you living here in Massachusetts. I want you raising your families in Massachusetts. I want you growing businesses in Massachusetts, right? But that's going to happen if we make life more affordable. And that's why this housing bill is so important. That's why we need your help and advocacy to get it done and get it done quickly. Housing constructions starts, will start in the spring or not, right? So we've got to get this going and get this going now. What does it do? Well, it's called the Affordable Homes Act because it's about creating, or in some instances, rehabbing, renovating, preserving nearly 70,000 new homes for low- and middle-income families, okay? We want to do that all across the state. It's going to do so many things, help us address climate goals, uh, equity issues, empowering <laughs> communities to meet their residents' needs. It's going to help us revitalize our main streets and our neighborhoods and improve the quality of life. It's also a plan that's going to generate a ton of great paying jobs working directly with the Massachusetts building trades. So this is a win-win and we need to get it done. It's going to authorize historic levels of capital investment in some existing programs like the Affordable Housing Trust Fund. It will include a new homeowner production tax credit, which will create new home ownership opportunities for moderate income households. It supports local capacity with a $175 million investment in our new Housing Works program. That's a program that will help cities and towns prepare their infrastructure for new homes. And importantly, it's going to repair and modernize 43,000 units of state-funded public housing. There's a lot in this. There's a lot in this, but it, there needs to be a lot in this. Um, it also includes $200 million for a housing innovations fund, which will provide new solutions for residents with complex needs. And I want to rep, uh, recognize Representative Hawkins, as well as Senator Paul Feeney, for their leadership on this important issue as chairs of the caucus to end and prevent homelessness. Thank you, Jim. <clears throat> and uh, some other important new policies I just want to highlight. These are tools that are about giving our cities and towns what they need to get this housing built up. So now there's going to be a local option transfer fee on high dollar sales where that money can be used to support and fund affordable housing. Inclusionary zoning by simple majority, which will make it easier for our cities and towns to create mixed income housing. As of right status for accessory dwelling units, the ADUs. I'm telling you, <clears throat> this alone will unblock in one of the most significant and impactful ways a ton more housing around the state. And I want to credit and thank Mayor De Simone for recognizing that the potential that ADUs have to help create housing options in Attleboro. Put together, our housing strategy is bold, but it has to be. It has to be to meet the moment that we're in, folks. It's as simple as that. I want to thank all the advocates who worked hard um, to provide input all the way along and stakeholders. And look, um, we just want to get this done. You know, it's about making Massachusetts an affordable, wonderful, livable place for residents in Attleboro and all across this great state. And now I'd like to turn it over to Secretary Ed Augustus, who has really leaned in hard and done an incredible amount of work in just what, 140 days? 146 days. 146 days, okay? We got a budget, we got the tax package, and now this $4 billion housing bond bill. So this is Secretary Ed Augustus. Well, thank you, Governor. I'm very excited to be here in Attleboro today. This city is really a shining example of what a community committed to building affordable housing can do. From adaptive reuse of historic buildings to mixed use and affordable housing projects, you've demonstrated time and time again uh, a dynamic commitment to being creative in overcoming housing challenges. Today we stand here at yet another success. This old jewelry factory, once empty and boarded up, is now fully occupied. A thriving community offering affordable and workforce housing to the people of this city. 
As a former city manager, I know the work that it takes to bring all of the parties to the table, find a common vision, and put the right funding mechanisms in place. Congratulations to you. Uh, you should all be proud of the work you've done together. The governor mentioned the expansion of the low income housing tax credit from 40 million to 60 million. These tools are critical in making projects like this a reality. More than $5.3 million of state funds went into Union Mills, along with funds from the city as well as from Mass Housing. But we need developments like this and a lot more. Right now, 1.6% of the housing units across the state are available for sale or rent. 1.6. That is the lowest vacancy rate of all 50 states. A healthy housing ecosystem should be 4 to 5% vacancy rate at any given time, which empowers a consumer to be able to get a, a rental unit or to make a reasonable offer on purchasing a home. How many people here have a family member or experience themselves or know somebody they've worked with who've had to make multiple over-asking offers and then still to come away not having the opportunity to home ownership? That is what that low vacancy rate represents to real people uh, and their frustrations. And those people increasingly are saying, well, I guess the home ownership isn't an opportunity for me here in Massachusetts. I'm looking elsewhere. And the governor was very clear and very specific. We can't let that happen any longer. We need to come up with a bold plan, a plan that thinks outside the box, that pushes the envelope, that really moves the needle on housing production so those talented individuals stay here in Massachusetts and make their contributions here in Massachusetts. So we're going to do this. Governor Healy and Lieutenant Governor Driscoll set out that clear vision, uh, put in motion to address this housing crisis, which truly is the greatest challenge of our time. And as was mentioned, we're 146 days old, and I'm proud to serve as HLC's first secretary. Uh, and we've been tasked to do bold things to meet this crisis. And I think $4.13 billion is bold. Uh, it is exactly what is needed to supercharge the building of housing here in Massachusetts. That funding is accompanied by 28 policy recommendations that will remove barriers and obstacles to housing production. Uh, these are measures we know will work. We know they'll work because we listened. We engaged with folks who are doing this work, with developers, with local leaders, with housing advocates, with tenants with folks who faced the challenges of this housing market. We listened to them, we collected their ideas, we put them together in what is now the Affordable Homes Act. We heard from people who wanted to make it far easier for people to add accessory dwelling units to their properties. This is an easy way to add more housing units while giving homeowners more options for their properties. We estimate we can unlock up to 8,000 units over the first five years with this one policy change alone. We've heard for the need for funding for more kinds of construction projects. The Affordable uh, Homes Act would set aside $100 million for the Commonwealth Builder Program. This creates permanent source of funds for construction of affordable single-family homes in gateway cities like Attleboro. We urgently need this kind of construction. It also will set aside $275 million for sustainable and green housing initiatives to both unlock and accelerate new housing solutions, such as converting office space to housing. We know this is a critical strategy, particularly in places like Attleboro and Worcester that have a lot of underutilized commercial buildings, usually in your downtown. You want that density, you want that walkability, you want those people supporting the retail and the restaurants in your downtown area. It's green because we're reusing some of those buildings and we're putting people in good, affordable housing exactly where we want them, where they'll support the vitality uh, of those downtown areas. And this bill provides new tools to incent the conversion of office space and other outmoded uh, malls, retail space into housing production. Uh, we think that's a green strategy and also one that really uh, complements uh, every community's desire for viability and, 
and walkability in their communities. This is a 450 percent increase uh, over funding from the 2018 housing bond bill. That's a significant increase uh, in that five-year period. And I've had a chance to visit many of our public housing authority buildings. Uh, and quite honestly, they're not in the shape that we want them to be, in the shape that they should be. And that's why the governor has included in this plan $1.6 billion or tripling of the capital investment for public housing infrastructure. Public housing in Massachusetts should, should be safe, it should be comfortable, and it should be where people can live with dignity. The Affordable Homes Act represents the most significant housing legislation filed in Massachusetts since 40B over 50 years ago. But in real terms, the passage of this act will mean more places like Union Mills, more places like Garden Terrace. It means more projects like 54 Union Street, uh, just next door here, which is slated to receive $1.8 million from the Housing Development Incentive Program, or HDIP, as the governor mentioned, that was significantly increased uh, in the tax bill that she recently signed. We need your support in advocating for this important legislation. We need to act now and put this plan in place and supercharge our housing industry. The issue of housing affordability isn't one that belongs uh, to Massachusetts alone, but we will lead the way to address it. It's now my privilege to turn it over to Tara Mazarari, Mas Mar uh, the Executive Vice President of Affirmative Investments, who's really responsible for this great project behind us. Tara. The poor secretary had the hardest name on the program to say today. Um, well, welcome. I, as I said, I'm Tara Mizrahi. I'm Executive Vice President of Affirmative Investments. Um, Affirmative, along with the Group E3 Development, uh, both which are women-owned companies, we're co-developers of this beautiful project behind us. Uh, we, along with Bob Koditek, who's here today, um, have helped Bob Jones and his family, Tom is also here today of the Jones family, to make this project a reality. Um, Bob grew up in Attleboro and wanted to bring housing back into the downtown. Um, He's, he saw promise in these old buildings and knew there was a way to connect economic and housing development close to transit. As you can see, downtown Attleboro is very lively and it's a very exciting place to be. The future holds a lot for this city. We're, we're proud to be here. Um, I couldn't be more pleased to join the governor, the secretary, and the mayor here today in front of Union Mills, which is home to 49 households. Um, as people said, the building originated as a um, a jewelry manufacturer largely to make metal stamped buttons and started, it's actually three historic buildings put together and it was started in 1875. Um, it's been vacant for a very, very long time and tying together with the um, administration's uh, goal towards green, we really felt it was important to try to reuse this building. Um, even though renovating historic buildings is incredibly challenging. Um, it now has two studios, ones, twos, and three bedroom units. Um, but by combining the city resources, state resources, and historic tax credits, we were able to um, do what's behind us today. It wouldn't exist without the political and financial support from the city and the incredible support, incredible support of the Commonwealth, including many of the programs that people mentioned. And I know that, that I, I was going to skip over the programs, but I think it's it's important for people to hear these names because we do have so many different his, uh, tools that we can dip into for the, for the um, creation of affordable housing. So the project behind us used affordable housing trust fund money, housing stabilization fund, community-based housing. These are three of the programs that the governor's bill uh, will expand dramatically. Um, in addition, the tax cut bill that uh, the governor spoke about, which increased the annual cap on state low-income housing tax credits, this, pro this building behind us greatly benefited uh, from state histor historic low-income housing, state low-income housing tax credits. Um, the state also does historic tax credits, which we also dipped into. It's amazing how many resources you have to put together to do a project like this, and we are really thankful for the Commonwealth to be there. Um, the project behind us serves a wide range of households, um, very low income all the way up to workforce housing, uh, a program which mass housing uh, operates. 
Um, Affirmative is working to provide housing opportunities throughout the Commonwealth, and we're incredibly lucky to have access to the array of tools that I've discussed to create affordable homes, and in particular, have the ability to work with the Healy Driscoll administration, because they think and they act big. We're very thankful. I would like, Nick, I would like to welcome Charlie Dirac from POWA, the Senior Project Manager. Thank you, Tara. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, on behalf of Preservation of Affordable Housing, I want to thank all of our speakers and, of course, Governor Healy for inviting us to participate in this event today. Uh, I'm excited to represent POA as we highlight the Affordable Homes Act, uh, which is an amazing achievement for Massachusetts, as we've heard. Um, and we continue to set the bar for affordable housing policy and legislation. This bill is going to have an immediate and measurable impact. We'll be touring a few affordable housing developments uh, shortly, and it's always exciting to get out in the field and see firsthand uh, just exactly what these housing programs can deliver. Um, one of the stops on our tour, as we've heard, is going to be Gardner Terrace Apartments. Um, Gardner Terrace is 90, 92 deeply affordable homes for seniors and residents with disabilities. Um, before POA stepped in and acquired the property, it was threatened by severe financial distress and physical deterioration. Um, our funding partners, Mass Housing, and of course the Commonwealth's Executive Office of Housing and Livable Communities, have stepped up in a big way to provide the funding that we need to rehab this historic building, but more importantly, to preserve the underlying affordability that our residents need and deserve. As many of you know, um, affordable housing development is highly dependent on public resources, and we've heard a few times today that one of the state's most important gap funding tools is the state low-income housing tax credit, um, and this was really the difference maker at Gardner Terrace Apartments. So um, that's expected to generate over $10 million of private equity investment, which is going to help fund over $25 million of construction activity, um, which is sorely needed, as you'll see on the, on the tour shortly. Um, Poe has been working on this deal for a few years now, so I want to personally thank the governor for uh, expanding um, on this vital affordable housing development resource. Uh, as we've mentioned, a 50% increase in the recent tax bill that was enacted earlier this month. Um, and additionally, I want to highlight the Affordable Homes Act's $275 million commitment to sustainable and green housing initiatives. Um, POA and its partners across the Commonwealth are committed to developing green and sustainable affordable homes, and this bill provides us with the tools that we need to make that happen. So we appreciate the administration's leadership, and we look forward to putting these new resources to work to provide new and better housing for the people of the Commonwealth. Um, and with that, I will turn it back over to the governor. Thank you. So, thank you. I never say much, but I want to say thank you to the governor and to Secretary Augustus for coming out to visit our city. Uh, there's so many good things going on here, and we're so proud of it. Thank you for thank you for all your support. Oh, and I want to mention the other electeds: Rep. Scanlon from North Attleboro, Rep. Doherty from Taunton. Uh, we have City Councilor Ty Waterman and City Councilor Diana Holmes here as well. And thank you for thank you for coming as well. It's great. It's great. It's great. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, well, thank you. We're happy to take any questions on topic. Governor, how soon do you hope, I'm sure you'd like to have this passed tomorrow, but realistically, how soon do you think you might be able to get this to the legislature? Housing is the number one issue uh, across the state. It's, a, it's frankly, it's the number one, two, and three issue. And, you know, I want to do everything I can. It's why I'm out here today. It's why I will continue to be out here day after day, week after week, until we get this done. It is that important. And I look forward to working with colleagues in the legislature to work on this and work this through. We need it. Maybe you could do it this year? I hope to do, be able, I hope it's done as soon as possible. Um, it's that important. And I know that for many of us in elected office, it is, it is what all of us hear about. And, you know, we were able to work really well with the legislature, both in the budget and in the tax package. And I expect we'll have um, the same success as we work through the housing bond bill, but it's urgently needed. We had good discussions about a range of issues. Again, I know that this is something that uh, is the number one issue facing residents around the state, also facing the business community and employers as 
We risk talent leaving to go to other states where you can actually afford to buy a home or at least rent a home. And so um, it's with that urgency and intentionality that we're going to continue the conversations with the legislature on that. And I look forward to working with the legislature and leadership on these issues. Are you confident that the policy provisions won't be watered down and that you won't just get back a bonding bill to recapitalize programs? The moment we're in is different. The moment that we are in right now as a state is different. Uh, we're at a time right now where we're losing people. We see people leaving the state. And the reason that they're leaving the state is because they can't afford to live here. We've got the best schools. We've got the best workforce training. We get the best of so much, right? We're Massachusetts. There's so much to be proud of. There are reasons why people come to live here and stay here, grow their families here, and grow businesses here. It is also the case that housing is expensive. But we have the opportunity to do something about that through some of the steps we've already taken that are really important and through the passage of the Affordable Homes Act. Well, it's by right, and I welcome Secretary Augustus's comment on it, and it does get to the policy issues. You know, um, the reason that the policy is there and the reason that the policy needs to stay there is because this is how we're going to actually implement and get this done, okay? So it's about more than just putting money at a problem. It's the way you spend that money, and it's the measures that you take and the steps you take to make sure that you've set Massachusetts up for success and set our communities up for success. And what I really like about the Affordable Homes Act is it contains a menu of options for our cities and towns. We have 351 cities and towns. They're all unique and different communities may choose to go about creating more housing in different ways because of the circumstance. This is an example of tremendous preservation, renovation, and there are other parts of the state I was out in Pittsfield the other day. Great examples of, you know, there's great bones there that just need to be, um, need to be uh, treated with a little TLC and, and a little bit of capital. And all of a sudden you turn something that was a jewelry making entity, factory, into housing. So it's both preservation and renovation. There are also options there for new production. But the policy is really important to being able to get to where we need to be in supercharging housing production around the state. Is there anything else on that? I would just say on the ADUs piece, we're not uh, treading untread ground here. California has done this previously. Multiple other states have done that. ADUs by right. Uh, the great thing here is that we think within five years, 8,000 units conservatively would be created at no cost to the Commonwealth. Uh, homeowners would do that uh, as the opportunity to generate some additional income or in some cases to bring a family member closer to take care of them. So it's something other states have used. We know it can work here. We just need to remove some of the local obstacles that in some communities exist. Every community isn't as uh, enthusiastic as Attleboro is about housing, and uh, we think this is something that can be easily done uh, and make a real difference on moving the needle in housing. No, uh, <coughs> let that go by. So I, I spent almost nine years being the city manager of Worcester. I know something about running a local community and the importance of local control, but there is a balance there. Uh, and I also know that, you know, when you're motivated to stop something, there are a lot of ways that you can do that. And now is the time not to be stopping housing. Now is the time to be promoting housing. And we think this is a way that the state can partner with local cities and towns to do just that. Great, thank you. Thanks, Secretary. Great, thank you. Great, great. You know, you know it continues to be a priority for me. Uh, and I appreciate our representative Hawkins standing right here. Uh, we want great things for the South Ottawa Road T Station. I'll tell you that, okay? Thank, We're continuing to advocate.